First is, everybody started shopping in their neighborhoods because they realized that that was the closest that they could go without getting cornered by the police. Or the other option was actually order online. And then the headache of actually delivering is on the retailer and not on you to go and pick it up from there. So a lot of us started adopting online because we found it to be a very convenient category, to a convenient channel to use. However, this is only for food. But this did not include fashion. So those who were in the fashion cycle suddenly saw that their stores were remaining closed. They had bought merchandise for the spring summer season. And as the store closures continued, the climate also changed. And they were stuck with opening stores sometime in June and in July, where the season was almost over and they had to buy new merchandise. So here were fashion retailers stuck with what you might define as old season inventory, no revenues because their stores are actually closed and the need to actually balance out the inventory to take into account the needs of the new season. Now this was all assuming that COVID wave one was the only wave that we would have and that with that behind us, we would now have to plan like normal. And of course, that wasn't the reality. And during the course of COVID wave one, the brief time that we were open after that, then wave two, that is the Delta wave, and the longer time that we were allowed to open after that, and then wave three, and the short period of time that we were closed during wave three, the last two years have been a great teacher for each one of us as retailers. We learned that on the one hand, we did not have revenue, but we needed cash. So we learned how to create cash out of zero revenue. We learned that because we didn't have revenues, we would obviously start losing money. So we figured out how to be able to cut costs so that we could actually save on the costs and thereby lose less than what we would have normally lost. We also learned that whatever small losses there were, it was an uncertain time. And we didn't know that whether we would open or whether we would close. And because of which, we all started to build up our capital. Build up our cash balances so that even if we could not open, we still had cash in order to tide over the loss-making period. So we learned that. And the fourth is that some of us who were better capitalized learned that many people were vacating stores, many landlords were not getting tenants, Maybe this is a good time for us to be able to acquire a new property at much lower rentals. So there was an oppor opportunity in the situation which many of us then capitalized on. So the approaches that each one of us as retailers took during that period of time was quite different depending on our own category in which we were retailing depending on our own fund situation, depending on our own business models and how they were structured in terms of fixed costs, variable costs, cash on books, margin structures that we enjoyed, whether there was seasonality or no seasonality. All of those factors kind of determined how exactly did we plan on running our business and the kind of approach that we took as far as the future was concerned. So here I have with me gentlemen from different facets of the retail industry. On the one hand, we have Gautam, who's from the food industry, who's actually what you might define in the food services industry. And while initially handicapped, later on certainly a lot of members in the food service industry figured out that there's a completely new model that they could adopt in order to keep the kitchens burning. Then we had Jay. Jay is from the food industry. And here I'm talking about food products, not 
the history of their business and the progress of the business, especially in the last two years. And I think what we've seen is that in the last two years, the, the future got shown to us. Many of us had difficulties in terms of being able to see the future when we run our businesses. And when COVID struck and lockdown was announced on March 2020, March 24, 2020 to be exact, a lot of us wondered, you know, how will we run our business if we have to stay at home? First of all, we're also used to going to stores and going to offices and, you know, running our lives, our professional lives. And we all wondered how will we actually conduct ourselves professionally if we can't go to an office. Uh, we also wondered how children will study if they don't go to a school. Uh, we also wondered how will we actually see the latest movies if we don't go to a theater. And there are several new paradigms which were created at that point of time. And none of us really imagined that we would get through the last two years like the way we did it. We all fast forward learned technology such as Zoom and Microsoft Teams in order to be at least communicate with each other. Many of us who've got children in school going uh, age also figured out that they learned to use Microsoft Classrooms, and certainly the children did a much better job than the adults in adapting to technology. Many of us, was, you know, whose normal habit used to be to go and do the first day, first show, found that they could actually do this sitting at home using, you know, OTT channels. So that was a new way in which we figured out how to entertain ourselves. When we didn't have people coming in to help us in the domestic support in our homes, we also figured out that we had some capabilities in terms of cooking food. We also had some capabilities in terms of washing bathrooms and cleaning rooms. So we all discovered that we had new talents. We didn't have to actually dig deep or search far but we, all these talents quickly came to us. So what this goes to prove is that, as they say, there is a saying which is the necess that necessity is the mother of all invention. In this particular case, the necessity was that we were to define a new way of being able to run our business and to be able to live our lives. And because of the fact that we had to learn to adapt to this new way of running businesses, running our professional lives, and living our own personal lives, we all managed to quickly figure out some form of jugad, which worked for each one of us. So what happened after that? When lockdown was announced, everybody closed. After a while, you know, people realize that, you know, how do I get food? How do I buy, buy my daily necessities? So promptly, the first which you're allowed to open were all the grocery stores. So all that panic buying in the beginning, which happened where people were hoarding up and thinking that they might not be able to access food, which is a very, very primitive uh, trait which all of us have. If you look at animals also, animals also hoard up. You know, when they get food, they hoard up a lot of food. And similar to that, you know, even there is a basic instinct in all humans to be able to hoard up, which is what we all did. And after hoarding up, we realized that we were running out of various things because obviously we didn't know how to, you know, plan supply chains as well as maybe retailers plan supply chains. And uh, then the stores began to open up. When the stores opened up, the restriction on movement continued, which means that you couldn't go to the store or you could step out of your house with the permission or you could step out of your house with a justification that you're actually going to buy food. So what happened because of that? 
two things out in the restaurant industry, food products, and he figured out that he was in the essential services category. Then we have Avnish, who's there from the fashion industry, certainly not allowed to open in the beginning, had to close, and also had to walk this tightrope because of the fact that you have changing seasons and changing tastes, and because of which you need to keep planning your inventory. And then we have the king of them, who's from the pharmaceutical industry. And that was one industry like the hospital industry where you actually had to keep open because it was an essential requirement. So we have different kinds of people who are participating in this. And what I'd like to address to each of them in the beginning is to be able to kind of understand how each one of them adapted to the situation when it actually happened. And then from that, what are the lessons that they learned? And then when they look at the future, how do they look at the future? So Yash, since you are in the, in the essentials commodity, both you and, uh, and Jay, how did you all manage in terms of adapting to the situation in the beginning? Uh, hi, good evening, everyone. I think I'll pick it up from March 2020. March 2020, yes. The pandemic started. I think everything is revolving in the center of the pandemic currently, the, all the discussion. So since the pandemic started, I think the first quarter of 2020 for somebody like us or people in our industry was amazing. Even when we look at our comparisons from that quarter to this quarter or year on and so forth, they will never match that. But when you know something has a sudden spike in a short span of time, it is never going to be long lived. It, is, it has a very short span of life. So that was important to understand at that point. I think uh, luckily in the March, April months of the pandemic, we were well suited to provide and cater to the city of Hyderabad and Sikandra, uh, cities of Hyderabad and Sikandrabad. But going forward, we saw a sharp degrowth from June, July onwards. And then we were never able to get back to those numbers. And that's when we realized that, you know, we are on a verge where the bull run is ending. We have to start adapting. We have to start understanding why the sudden spike of sales happened. Because it's very important to understand when you're doing a certain number and if that number is doubling in a quarter, the market had limited access. Like you rightly said, people were going to places which are closest to them. The shopping pattern had totally changed. People were going for a full basket shopping rather than just top ups. And then to hold on to that and to use that as an opportunity to tap into new customer base is what was very exciting for us. From uh, being 62 stores pre-pandemic to being 100 stores by December, launching another 38 stores was a tremendous effort by our team because we, w we felt like we have to get closer to the customers. We have to be more accessible to a larger audience there is. And I, I would say that that was a good decision on the part of the management of Ratnadeep and co uh, combined with the effort of the entire team. But I'm, I'm honestly, I'm going to talk about what I have learned through that and what I want to share my experiences through that. Because when, when, it's, when it's in a bull run, everything looks nice. Trust me, everything looks nice. At that point, you sometimes maybe lose the understanding of what you are actually trying to do, what was your core values, what are your core principles. And uh, somewhere, I think most of the retailers in our industry deviated. And when the second wave hit is when everybody, everybody had a very, very, very negative effect, not just FMCG, but fashion and food. But food, food industry was well suited, quick service restaurants were well suited because they had already adapted to be online by then. I think guys like us, a lot of companies like us were not ready when the second wave hit in 2021. And that was a jerking point that, you know, it, it, it is not going to be like the first wave. We're not going to have the same spike in sales. So that's when we started understanding, that's when we started consolidating that, you know, we have to really create a more sustainable environment for our team to function, for our stores to function, that it can't always be about growing the top line. In the process of the first wave to second wave, the bottom line had actually quite shrunken. So 
the thoughts were just about you know reaching out to the customers in a way where we actually end up making money and not losing money and that's when the whole conversation started about you know creating an important and uh, an important diversification of going really strongly in omni channel because right now there are a lot of apps available on the market a lot of white label apps are available on the market but they don't have the same customer experience or they don't have the same customer satisfaction we have taken it as a pledge since the last 6 months that we will get into the market with a strong omni channel strategy well suited for all sorts of environment in the future well suited uh, well suited for any demand or supply shocks including our stores as as long as the stores are accessible but we still need to get inside the customers house through a mobile app so creating a platform which uses the existing stores reduces the load on the current bottom line and enhances our sales from the existing platform that we have done so that is what the entire motive is right now for ratnadeep as a retail entity we have to we have to create a more sustainable environment is what we see currently but thanks yash so what i can understand is that at the end of it uh, what you all have concluded internally is that uh, you'll you'll get more productivity out of your current investment yes. what you've got in terms of stores and inventory and what you've got in terms of customers uh that which you will leverage to be able to add on more more top line such that the entire ebitda flows to the bottom exactly i think i also want to take a couple of minutes of this forum to say that like you said leveraging the existing opportunities leveraging the existing platform you have keeping that in mind i had a yearning i kept on thinking that you know ratnadeep has been there for a long time 35 years it's great it's created a niche in the market it's created a separate segment of customers but there is a larger customer that we are missing out on i think you see there's a powered by by national mart national mart came into play last year we are strong with three stores it's a value format under ratnadeep samrela we have been doing tremendously well we are looking at getting into tier 2s with that model we are looking at getting into areas where as a brand i think avnish was telling you know how important a brand is we feel that everywhere we can't position ratnadeep it's not good it's a premium brand we have and being an opportunistic thinker as or as an organization that we are very ex, uh, we are very aspiring so we thought you know my, uh, why not we go for a second brand which will help us tap into much larger markets of the rural telangana or rural andhra in the long run as mr ranjan was also saying the rural market is a very cash rich market which not which has not been tapped into by major retailers so i think leveraging the existing experience of 35 years of ratnadeep the buying power that we have today the sort of negotiations that we can do the sort of goodwill we have created in the market is helping us establish national mart as a new model in the market which will be purely it will it will purely focus on the value supply chain it will focus on being more affordable more accessible to a larger customer base providing the same quality uh, so that is what has come out of the pandemic actually to be speaking that has helped us to get into a second brand and 30 35 years we have never even thought about you know having a second brand we were very happy we were very comfortable you know ratnadeep is doing great that is when we have actually come out of our comfort zone so we have great plans for national mart going forward also we are launching big stores big box stores we will be targeting a much larger customer base we are uh, we are looking at targeting thousands and thousands of walk in on a daily basis so that is something great that has come out of the pandemic for us thank you and j on the other hand you are you know equivalent to a hospital when you run a pharmacy chain and you've got both offline and online and the largest pharmacy retailer in this country so how did you all adapt to that situation so thank you is my audible yeah okay <laughs> first of all uh, good evening you know all of you you know from hyderabad i think this has been a long you know due to have uh, uh, the hyderabad summit here so very happy i i always say that i'm an odd man out here because as a pharmacy as a small box you know retailer but uh, during covid we got a lot of you know the prominence and respect and we have been you no know, really uh, satisfied we saved many lives that's what i always you know say i being a ceo the last 700 days i was in the war room we were we never work from home we have been always in the office because we have a 35000 employees at the front end when we have close to 4500 stores across the country and we have our presence kashmir to kanyakumari it is not just in a 
one border of you know in the south or something where we have a store we have across east west north south and central so how do we manage this and uh, i know this is a big story with itesh a number of times we have discussed this but maybe to just make it as a shorter yeah itesh make it to as shorter i think lot of learnings as everyone has said and initial days and also i would love to i uh, know the clarify the myth where uh, healthcare industry was the only one was a roaring business they have done during the covid it's a myth yes uh, during the covid we have been you know done lot of uh, you know in terms of service and products related to covid but whereas the other part of it maybe elective surgeries or in terms of doctor consultation or in terms of any other planned surgeries and in terms of the consultation due to pediatrics or a skin or a you know any other uh, the uh, you know the categories where we have not done any consultation or etc so in turn what has happened it's all about it's only we are serving the chronic consumers as well as during the covid we are saving the people but yes thank god we have survived that much i can able to really assure you to this you know this forum maybe it's a forum for me to communicate this on behalf of the entire healthcare industry not just as an apollo and uh, especially what we have done in 2020 we have just started our you know the uh, omni channel but we never felt and the covid like wave will come and we were so strong in offline retail 53 hospitals 150 diagnostics 200 plus you know the uh, healthcare clinics and etc home care but when this pandemic has come everything has went digital in overnight but i think we had a framework and uh, as a organization the capability was there because it's a more of four decades organization somewhere you know when we had a three and a half or a 4 lakh walk ins what we used to serve every day suddenly the spike of 8 lakhs but we have managed it and it is purely with you know the technology what we have built and also the people at the front because it's a it's all about purpose you know it's like a war you are at the front we have lost 14 people during the one covid 1 and covid 2 they were at the store they were serving the 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 people who are with covid they will be coming into the store because they don't know they need someone to serve them so at the end of the day the guys are at the ground they need to serve so what we have seen during that time is that how do we really fastly adopt digital so we felt that this we had a framework how can we just make it just 90 days target we have taken where we have brought all the physical assets of apollo being the hospitals diagnostics clinics home care pharmacy condition management everything we brought it in one app and i think we have uh, though we have just started it but it has really helped in covid wave 2 it was really a disaster you all know how it has happened and uh, we could able to serve you know like 3x 4x of the required medicine related to only you know the covid at the time i think that's biggest learning and that adaptation has happened so fast as we said the embracing the change as retailers we need to do i hope that my you know one of my satisfying you know the thing over the last two years though saved many lives and all the stuff but what is that really as infrastructure we need to create that i think in a right time we could able to do as a team that's our you know the biggest learning during this you know the uh, covid times and also the consumer behavior is changing how we are going to adopt now i think and we are coming into basics once again because the last two years is all about covid now we are coming into basics you know once again i'll not take much of time so what we are actually trying to do is that you know how do we really you know the customers who all are we have served the consumers who all are we have served our existing as well as the new consumers you know we have acquired during the you know covid how can we be loyal to them and you know been continuously engaged with them so that's the way of you know surviving and another way just to add on as a lighter part of it and uh, so everyone has saw that oh it is only a kirana or pharmacy as allowed to open so we have seen 135000 new licenses have been issued in the last you know 24 months and which is a close to a 37% of the higher than the what numbers you know what we have so that's in a one year it has happened i don't know how this will but yes market is very wide and it's like you know 150000 crore market still the organized is hardly less than 5 to 7% so the market is there and uh, so this is what has happened but everyone has to survive and uh, so we need to have our you know the strategies in place and with supported by ecosystem that's what thanks uh, 
Thank you, Jay. Thank you very much. And I think clearly where, where you can see there is that, you know, uh, people are on the forefront, on the war lines, as they might say. You know, right in the front, addressing the needs of those who might be suffering or sometimes even close to death. Because, you know, there have been heart-rending scenes where you have, you know, the patients 